Hello everyone, today we're going to look at Isako training feed ratios. Okay, in this problem we're given uh, basically three types of mixtures, barley, oats, and wheat. And then um, we're given the goal ratio, so we're going to try to create this ratio between the barley, oats, and wheat. And we're given three types of mixtures. For example, we can give one mixture that has... Um, that has a ratio of one to one one barley to two oats to three wheats, or another one of three barley to seven oats and one wheat, and so on, as you can see. Okay, so given these um, types of mixtures, we're going to try to create the goal. Um, we're going to try to create uh, the goal mixture. Which means that we basically have an infinite supply of all of these three mixtures, and we're going to try to combine um, some amount of each to make our goal. So, for example, if we want to make um, a ratio of three to four to five, we can use eight of one, two, three, um, one of the second type, and five of the um, five of the third type and the result would be basically the um the result of this. So then for example if you took the if you took eight of the first type then for your first number you would add eight so because you would um multiply eight by one. Over here you would multiply one by three. You would multiply uh five by two. So then this would be ten plus three plus eight which would be twenty one. And the same would go for the uh the oats and the weights. Okay. So we're given that um we have to use no more than a uh, a hundred total each. So basically, I take back or I take back what I said before. We basically do not have an infinite amount of supply. We can only use at most a hundred of uh, these three mixtures. And then if we cannot find anything, then we just print out none. Otherwise, um, we first print out the uh, the number of first mixtures we use, the number of second mixtures we use, the number of uh, third mixtures we used, and basically the multiple. So the multiple kind of goes like this. So over here, you see that, um, for example, for the first mixture, or for barley, actually, you would result in 20 units, 21 units of barley. You would end up with 28 units of um, of oats and 35 units of wheat. So then, what you do is that you basically divide this by your uh, by your goal ratio, which which then you would get seven, which is what you would put here as as the last um, component of your answer. Okay. So what we can basically try here is that we know that we have barley, we have oats, we have wheat. We know that we only have a hundred barley, a hundred oats, and a hundred wheat at most actually. So what we can do is that we can basically simulate uh, using um, any amount from so what we can do is that we can choose, we can use one amount, and we can basically we can take this range here. So which this means that we can use um basically. Okay, let's actually freeze it like this. Okay. So we actually do not have this. Basically, okay. So we have mixture number one, mixture number two, mixture number three. All right, so. For example, let's call this B1, O1, W1, B2, O2, W2, B3, O3, W3. So what we know, what we know here is that we only have a hundred of these, hundred of these at most. So we can basically use at most a hundred of each of these. So then, what we can do is that we can simulate, for example, we can simulate using one of these. Or we can simulate using two of these, or three, or up to 100, since that is the upper bound on the number of 
uh, first mixtures we can use, and the same thing you do for the uh, the second mixture. Again, you do this for the third mixture as well. So then, what we end up is that we basically start brute forcing, um, for example, like how much uh, how much of each mixture we use. So then, you know that there's basically a hundred possible combinations over here. You also have a hundred over here, hundred over here, because for each of these, you can choose to use um, one, two, three, up to a hundred, which sums up to a hundred uh, types. So then, if you multiply these together, you would get um, ten to the sixth power, which would us uh, surface in our this or in this case. So then, now what we need to do is that let's call this um. Let's call this x1, x2, x3, which means um, basically um, how much of these mixtures we use. So now we need to test if x1, x2, and x3 works. Okay, so what we can do here is that we can basically first sum up all the values. So for example, you see that for barley, so you know that it's Barley to oats to wheat. Wow, very cool. So then for barley, okay, so let's consider barley. Over here, you see that um, you have x1 of b1, so then it would be x1 times b1. It would be x2 times b2. x3 plus b3. Okay, and now for wheat, You would have, um, or actually for oats, my bad, oats. Like for oats, this would be O1, or it's actually used as we had before, so this would be X1, O1, X2, O2, X3, O3. And for our final um, wheat, whoops. My bad. Okay, so wheat. We have um. All right, so we have again. We have X one since we know that we're using X one, um, mixture X one of mixture one. So this would be X one times W one, X two times W two, and X three times W three. Okay, so let's call this. Um, let's call our result here, big B, big O, big W. So now we just have to make sure this uh, specific mixture is, um, is a correct, or is, um, is basically the same ratio as our goal. So now this is basically easier because we know that our ratio is B to O to W. And we're now we're comparing this to, um, we're comparing this to B, O, W, and, and this is basically the goal. So now we just need to make sure that, all right, we just make sure that um, B divided by B equals to O divided by O equals to W divided by small w. All right, so if we make sure this is true, then we make, then we know that this is a, um, uh, a possible answer. So this is a possible answer. And now that we know if this is a possible answer, we just need to compare. Um, we just need to compare. Uh, basically, what we do here is that if this is a possible answer, then we want to have the minimum, minimum um, x one plus x two plus x three. And that's basically it. So let's actually get coding. All right. So this is um, feed ratios. All right. Feed ratios. All right. So we're going to include um, STO. 
we're going to have um and and we're actually going to have um the first the goal ratio then the uh the ratios of the three mixtures so let's actually store all this in m so we have our mixtures so let's call this four and three so then for int i equals zero we, we can just read all these um in two for loops so we're just going to read um m i j all right so after this, we're going to basically brute force, as I said before, we're going to brute force each of these cases. So let's call this, um, this is actually x1. Or let's actually have our x array. So we have x of 3. Let's call this, we've got nd by default. So x0 can be from 1 to 100. x1, again, can be from 1. To 100 x3 x2 actually can be free from 1 100 all right so uh, this is x2 so what we do here is that we can also have um, another array called y3 all right so then why would basically store the uh, what we currently have here? So for example, let's actually go back here. All right, so as you see above, you know that, um, okay, so you know that this is our X and here is basically our Y. So this will be Y0, Y1, and Y3. So this would be equal to that. All right, so let's... Ooh, whoops, I meant to show here, so let me just point it out. So here, big B would be equal to Y0, O would be equal to Y1, and W would be equal to Y3. And as I said before, this would be X1, X2, and X3. All right. So then here, what we do is that um, we know that Y0 would be equal to... All right, so y0 would be equal to x0 times um times m1 we can actually uh basically sum this up so we can just set um this to basically an empty list okay so then what we do here is that um we just set y to zero All right, so now after this, or what we can do here is that we can actually separate the uh, the three, the goal and the mixture. So we actually have an, an goal array. So this is our goal. Since our first line is actually our goal, not our mixture. So we're going to read um, GI. This should have an end here. All right, so over here, what we do is that we loop through all the mixtures. Then we increment a y0, which is the number of barley we have, by um, x of i times um, m of i of 0. We increment uh, y0 by x of i times m i1. And we also increment y2 by x i m i2. Okay, so now we basically have our y, which is um the which is what we have before as the number of total barley we have, the number of total of oats we have, and the total number of wheat we have. Okay, so now after this. We're going to check if this works so let's call this okay let's set true true by default so we can loop through again from zero to three and we're going to check first thing we're going to check is that if yi or basically um if um yi is not divisible by um one of our goal ratios 
then we know that this won't work. Because what you know here is that if it's not divisible, then you know that there's no way to um, to multiply this by y. So then after this, what we can do here is that we can basically have, because um, we know all, of, all three of these are multiples. So then now we have to make sure that, let's actually get back to my drawing. It's over here. We have to make sure that basically, let's actually use red here. So we have to make sure that y0 divided by goal 0 has to be equal to y1 divided by goal 1, which has to also be equal to y2 divided by goal 2. Okay, so we have to make sure that this thing is equal, or is true actually, because we already know that y0 is divisible by g0, we know that y1 is divisible by g1, and we also know that y2 is divisible by g2. So now we need to make sure that this thing is true. So again, we go over here. Okay. So now if y0 divided by g0 is equal to y1 divided by g1, okay. Now we also need to make sure Let's actually use these brackets. That y1 divided by g1 is also equal to y uh, y2 divided by g2. So now, if this is the case, then this actually might be one of our choices for our answers. So what we have here, um, or actually for our answer, let's actually again see what we need to store. So we need to uh, basically print the amount we have. So the amount here is basically just x, and over here is our um, our multiple. So then again, look over here, let's call this answer 3, and let's call this int, um, or, or the answer value. Let's call this a pretty big number by default. And we also have to, um, our second part of our answer, which is basically the, uh, basically the factor. So now, if answer v, which is um, which is the minimum number of matrices we use, is greater than x zero plus x one plus x two, then we know that we have to update our answer here. So then it would be equal to x zero plus x one plus x two, and then our answer, um, answer zero would be equal to x zero, answer one would be equal to x1 and answer 2 would be equal to x2. So now we need to set our factors so then answer 2 would be equal to y0 divided by goal 0. Again one more thing I actually forgot to add something here so if we know that this is not divisible then we know that this won't be okay so then we have to make sure that this is okay and then we check this as well. So now after here we just print, or actually let's use printf. So what we're printing here is our printing three integers, or actually four integers. Answer one, answer two. So this is our answer array and answer two. Okay, so let's actually test this. Let's go to um, cycle training and feed ratio. Okay. Run main. Let me get the input. Second, okay. So, eight one five seven. Let's go here. Yep, that is correct. So then, let's actually submit this. So we're reading from um. Let's read the ratios that in. And we're writing to ratios. Ratios that out. Alright, so then let's submit this C. Alright. So let's go back here and let me select the file. Alright, feed ratios. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this did not compile correctly. 
Let me see this. Actually, let's go back here. Alright, so oh, I saw many typos. So free open. Okay, yeah, free open, not free free open. So that was just a typo. Alright, let's submit it again. Oh, okay. Caused by accessing memory out of bounds. Oh, okay. So I actually kind of see what's happening here. So then, because we are actually not printing if it's actually impossible to make this. So what we can do here is that if answer V is equal to 29, then we can print none. Otherwise, we print this. All right. Okay, let's actually see this answer. Wait, so this should actually have an possible answer. So then that is something wrong with that program. So let's actually go back here. And let's actually run this to see what's wrong. Okay, so that did terminate. So let's see. Oh, okay. So it turns out that one of these call variables are actually zero, which means that if we mo if we uh, take if we use this mod, then this would actually be false. Which means that um over here we have to make sure that. G I. Okay, so we ac we actually can make another case. So there should be else. Oops. All right. Okay, so if Y I, or actually if G I is equal to zero, so this is, should actually be our coordinate case over here. So basically, um, if Y I is not equal to zero, then we know that OK is gonna be false. Okay, so let's actually run that again. Okay, none. Okay. So let's actually see our answer over here. Oops, okay. So full we'll use talk answer. So oh okay, so it looks like we actually can use a zero of something. Which means that over here we can actually go to zero as well. And one more thing I noticed here, over here the same thing applies for what we have above because if it's zero then this would actually not quite work. So what we can do here is that we can basically multiply this. So we're basically checking if y y1 divided by uh, g1 is equal to y2 divided by g2. So then what we can do is that we can move this up here and we can move this up here. So this would result in um, y1 times g2 and y2 times g1. All right, and the same thing goes above here. Oh, yeah, so what we're actually doing here is that we're multiplying both sides by g0, which eliminates it over here, and we add it over here. And then we multiply both sides by um, g1, so then that goes gone. And we multiply it by G1. So it seems good. Alright, let me the inputs. Oh, okay. So times that, so this should be G, not um, A. Alright, so it looks like we terminated again. So Y0 times. Oh, okay. So what we have here is that. We're actually dividing again. So if y0 is equal to 0, or actually if it's not equal to 0, then um, actually that's not actually how it works. So what we do here is that we know that this is a proper number, so then we know that if, um, what do we do here? So the thing is that we know that this is our goal. And this is our um, 
we have so far. So then, what we can do here is that we can basically set a corner case. So if g of 0 is not equal to 0, then we do this. Otherwise, our answer to will be equal to 0. So let's actually run this. Ooh, OK. So let's see if we actually have any more like dividing stuff. All right, so we're checking here, here. Okay, so what we can do is that we can actually set, we're checking these three pairs. So we're doing x0, x1, x2. So, and then we just flush theta. All right, let me get the input. So we're checking 0, 0, 0, and this is not working. All right. OK, so if we use nothing of each, then we will result in nothing over here, nothing over here, nothing over here. So we, we can actually set a corner case since I don't think we, we can actually use 0 of anything, of, um, basically 0 of everything. So if x1 is equal to 0 and x1 is equal to 0 and x2 is equal to 0, Let's continue. Alright, I hope this works. Alright, so let's actually check this again. So, zero, zero, 001. So it looks like we actually are pretty messing up on when one of these are zeros. So let's look at this. So we actually go in here, so that looks this looks okay. Okay, so I, okay. And then we go over here, we check if g of i is equal to zero. If it's not, then we skip. All right, so, okay, so if zero mod anything. All right, so here's another case. So um, basically, if y i is equal to zero. So this means that um, basically, if if we have a goal and this is not achieved, then we know that we cannot do this. All right, so let's actually remove that as well. All right, so over here, I guess that looks okay. So let me get the input and let's run it again. All right, so checking zero 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 and it's failing yet again. All right, so let's see. So if y i is equal to zero, which is basically what we're having here, then um, this would. So let's actually look at this. So g i is not equal to zero. Then we do this. Hmm. All right. So y one, y two, y i, g i. All right, so what we can do here is that we can print y is equal to, since we know we have three integers, we can just print that. So we have y0, y1, y2. All right, so we know that our y is nothing, which is what we just predicted. So we know if we have a goal, then this would actually return false. All right, so we know that this is our goal. So we first check that. Um, we first check that if there's a goal here. So then we would actually this should actually be false. So then let's print OK equals to OK. That's actually pretty weird. Hmm. So over here, it's actually messing up. Oh, okay, so I think I'm actually messing up this, uh, basically this order. So I actually did not put the brackets, which I was supposed to do, but I didn't. All right, ooh, okay. So that's actually pretty checking a lot. So let's actually remove that, since we actually do not want to overflow our, um, our, check our checking. All 
Alright. Alright, so 0, 38, 7, 16. Let's check it over here. Very good. And let's submit it. Alright. Grab the file. Got it. Okay, so that is right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you. Bye.